It's a time to recall past quotes which still hit home. Now from San Francisco, Justice Bird. Thank you, Paul. As a young girl, I always enjoyed this time of year, and I think it was due to the fact that we celebrated so many holidays in school. And I thought it might be interesting to go back and see some of the national heroes who were born in January and February and see if uh, their words speak to us today. One of the first ones is Lincoln, and he had some very astute advice for presidential candidates in this uh, presidential election year. He said, if you once forfeit the confidence of your fellow citizens, you can never regain their respect and esteem. It's true that you may fool all of the people some of the time. You can even fool some of the people all of the time. But you can't fool all of the people all of the time. And if you think cynicism about politicians is something new, just listen to this observation by Thomas Jefferson. Whenever a man has cast a longing eye on governmental office, a rottenness begins in his conduct. George Washington was always very interested in foreign policy. And I thought he had some good advice for us in this day and age of Iran Gate scandals. He said, the nation which indulges toward another an habitual hatred or an habitual fondness is in some degree a slave. It is a slave to its animosity or to its affection, either of which is sufficient to lead it astray from its duty and its interests. Of course, the poor and the homeless have always been with us, and no one knew that better than Franklin Roosevelt, who was born in January. He had a very interesting insight into the plight of the poor and the homeless. He said, it is an unfortunate human failing that a full pocketbook often groans more loudly than an empty stomach. And of course, Martin Luther King was one of our greatest orators, and I like his comments on life. He said before he died, I've decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. You know, when you think about it, it's a wonderful legacy. We've been given words to live by and a day or two off from work or school to boot, unless, of course, you're an anchor person, and I suppose there are other compensations. Is that right, Paul and Ann? <laughs> I guess it must be. Thank you very much, Rose. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to share some thoughts with all of you about a little known fact that affects all of us. Almost 27 million acres of rainforests are destroyed each year. These forests contain 80% of the various plant genes on this earth. Once lost, we can't bring them back. Some conservationists have suggested laws that would hopefully reverse this trend. Since most of these forests are located in countries like Bolivia and Brazil, Certain third world deaths could be forgiven if these countries established sanctuaries or preserves. Not a bad idea. Over the years, as our knowledge of our planet has grown, so has our understanding of how to exploit it. Our tools and machines have grown bigger and stronger and faster. The stakes of the game have risen. Consumption has become a way of life for us rather than a means by which to live. The Earth's not as forgiving as it once was. It's not as tolerant of our mistakes. We've probed the Earth, excavated it, burned it, ripped things from it, buried things in it, chopped down its forest, leveled its hills, muddied its waters, and dirtied its air. That doesn't fit the definition of a very good tenant. And I suspect if we were here on a month-to-month -month basis, we would have been evicted long ago. We've not treated this Earth with the respect it deserves and it may not forgive us. Creative answers to our environmental problems demand hard work, dedication, goodwill, and cooperation. So let's support centers like Stanford University's Center for Conservation Biology and try to save these irreplaceable forests. Anne and Paul. Thank you, Thank Justice you. Bird.